Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I welcome efforts where two artists of different disciplines get together and collaborate on a project. In fact, Tom Beach of Beach Walker Boxes contacted me a bit ago based on an egg that I had made and wanted to make an egg out of cast glass. And he needed a form, the, a model in effect of the glass that he could use to make a mold for cast glass. I checked out his website, he does some nice work, go ahead and check it out. Now there's some specs that I had to meet on this. The wall thickness had to be at least a quarter inch everywhere, including the tenon and mortise areas, and he wanted the egg somewhere around five inches tall. So off I went, I decided to use poplar, but uh, since I don't want to just use a plain poplar, which is fairly ugly wood, I decided to dye it black in the process. So off and running, I have two pieces, made it together, got nearly to the end when, well, let's just say that this was not a good day and multiple things went wrong and I had a nasty catch right at the wrong time and broke out the bottom of the egg. What to do? Do I start over? Do I plug it? Do I patch it? Well, decision time. Well, in this case, I decided that, no, this is not going to be a form for a glass mold. This will be a new work of art. So. I took a tool and widened the hole in a stylized area where perhaps some form of bird broke out of this egg. So let's make an egg-shaped work of art. To start with, I glued two pieces of poplar. Poplar is not an especially pretty wood, generally considered paint grade. I thought it would be perfect to use for this mold. I roughed it out already, now I need to cut tenons on each end for mounting to a chuck. I'm using my skew to peel down to form a tenon. Rather than part the wood in two on the lathe, I'll cut it on the bandsaw. My V-table helps this make this cut safe. Next I'll mark off some of the planned measures. Now to start hollowing the egg box top. I'll start with a gouge to hollow the end grain. Then, as I got deeper, I'm switching to a round nose scraper. I also need to cut a mortise that I'll have to fit a tenon to a bit later. Now to sand the top's interior. Since the sanding may have affected my mortise, I'll dress it up just a little with a square carbide cutter. Next, since poplar's dull green and purple shades are not particularly attractive, I'm going to stain this egg black. I'm not sure any other color would blend with the wood's green hue. The dye is alcohol-based, which makes it compatible with a shellac finish. Next, to start work on the base. First, I'll transfer some measures to the end. Then, the next task is to turn a tenon to match the mortise on the lid. This is the standard cut a little test, cut a little more routine until the tenon fits the mortise. Since this is intended to become a glass mold, I want a loose fit. A tight fit would not work with glass. That makes this process much easier. Now to hollow the base. First, I make a small divot to guide the drill then drill a center hole. This will make the hollowing process much easier. Then I'll use my round nose scraper to hollow. I'm using a square carbide cutter to clean up the sides, then sand and finish the interior. Now I'll put the top and the bottom together with a paper towel to stiffen the mortise and tenon joint. Next I can start shaping the exterior. The tricky part is to ensure no wall is less than one quarter inch including at the mortise and tenon. No wall or feature can be less than one quarter inch, that's the rule. 
I need to shape the exterior to a pleasing curve, but keep this in mind so I don't cut it too thin. Next I'll stop and take some measures before continuing. I need to shorten the egg both in the base and in the top. I also need to thin down the walls somewhat. I'll use a square carbide scraper here since any cut could be the last. I keep watching the far top edge to evaluate the curve. I'm not making deep cuts at this point, being very careful to have a finished curve at almost any time. After some new measuring, I've decided I can take off more at the top, base and sides. Still easy does it. Time for another measuring session. Still more to remove, but the surface is good and ready to sand. Next I'll part off the little piece of wood between the top and the live center. But as I'm cleaning up the top, I trap my tool between the lid and the tool rest. Disaster strikes. Now what? Decision time. Scrap and start over? Repair? Or adapt? I'm choosing to adapt the design, so here we go. I'll finish the lid. I've wrapped my Chuck's jaws with masking tape for a little protection as I mount the lid in expansion mode onto my Chuck using the mortise in the lid. All I need to do is to sand, stain, and finish the lid. Next to finish the base or long portion of the egg that now has a hole in the end. I'm mounting this to the Chuck using the tenon for mounting. I'm using a spacer to hold the wood away from the base of the jaws just a little. This will allow me to sand the base clear up to the edge without running into the jaws. Since I'm only sanding, this is enough wood to hang on to. Then sand, stain, and finish the space. Now for the adaptation. The entire egg is finished with black stain and shellac, but has a big hole in the end. I'm using a Proxon tool to carve out some stylized brake lines around the hole. I'll leave these unfinished to provide some contrast. This turns my defect into a highlight. And it's done! It did not turn out the way I expected. While it will not become a glass mold, I do have an unusual egg box. What kind of bird laid this egg? A black one, of course, or Wait to see what the hatchling that came out of this egg grows into. If you have not already subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your face shield. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.